We are getting on a new boat in the Bahamas. I have some returning crew, including one that you haven't seen in a long time. In this video, I'm going to give you a tour of the new boat we're sailing, and then we're going to get off the dock to have some fun in the Bahamas. Guys, this is gonna be a very fun series of videos. We're back in the Bahamas, in the Abacos. This is the Conk Inn Marina. Uh, I kept the dark side here for a couple months last year. Really cool spot, great people that own the marina. Uh, Michael and some Brian run it. And then they all this brand new dock is all brand new. And they have their brand new restaurant right there, Snap, as it's not open yet, it's a bit early yet. But So the Navigar fleet here is, is here in Marsh Harbor in the Abacos. We are getting on a Bali 48. So. I'm kind of torn on the Bali 48, so I'll kind of go over some of that in a minute, but this one I really like, so pretty cool. But uh, we've got some returning crew, even some recruit crew returning from season one. So I'm gonna introduce you to those guys, and then we are gonna get off the, we're gonna give you a little tour of the Bali 48 we're on from Navigar Yachting, and uh, then we're gonna get off the dock. If you would like to charter a boat down here, use code DOODLE at checkout with navigar-yachting.com, and you can get $200 off your booking, and uh, pretty cool down here. We are excited to be back sailing in the Bahamas. Marsh Harbor is a really easy place to get to from the United States and it has some of the best cruising in the Bahamas. Marsh Harbor is the home of the Navigar fleet in the Abacos. If you'd like more information about chartering, go to navigar-yachting.com. Code DOODLE for $200 off. Alright, one more thing here. I think this video will be out in time. We're going to be at the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show this October 29th. Um, we're gonna be there all day, but we have an event at Highfield at two o'clock. So we'll be there from two to three at the Highfield booth at uh, October 29th at uh, the Florida International Boat Show. Hope to see you there. But this is our Bali 48. All right, so I'll show you the boat here in a minute, but first we gotta say hello to the crew. Welcome back, Dakota. Hi, I'm excited for this one. Yeah? yeah. By the way, uh, Dakota is the new host of Flying Doodles. Doing really well. The first two videos are doing awesome. Yeah. One has 200,000 views, the other one has 100 almost. So Yeah, well, yeah. hopefully it keeps going that way. Cool. Have you, you never sailed on a cat though yet, have you? Yeah, we did in Belize. Oh, we did, that's yeah. right, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm, I was thinking, I was thinking the two models, so we I forgot We were about just Blitz. on one. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Well, anyway. This one's so, a lot bigger though. Yeah, this, this is a lot nicer. Nice. Well, yeah. the other one was nice, this one is just, it's, I'll kind of get into that in a minute. But now we have our returning crew member from season one, come on over. We have Amanda. Hi. <laughs> I'm so, so uh, what's been going on with you? Wow, not too much. Over the last six or seven years, I kind of like got into filmmaking yeah. and that's been my bread and butter. I've wanted to come back and do this for so long. It's been like a long time in the making, but we made it back. Reunited. Well, hey, good to have you back as always there. And uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun. Uh, let's see here. You have been on a cat with us. Uh, that's the fun you were on, right? It was that Lagoon 450, yes. I think. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I, so you might have caught her like, like briefly on uh, 1883. She was an actor in that. So she's been. She won't talk. My about lines it. were cut out, but yeah, well, you know, we, we won't, were still we won't in talk it. about. We're it. still a paid <laughs> actor. So there you go. That's true. All right, uh, guys. So we're about to get off the dock. Let's do a quick tour of the boat. And uh, there you go. This is a 2021 Bali 48 from Navigar Yachting. Bali's are known for their new and innovative designs that really prioritize comfort over performance. All right, this is the Bali 48. Uh, it's a two, two 2021. Uh, for me, Bali's, I, I've, rolled, I've been two sides for me. I really like the design. I think they're very innovative and I like what they're doing. Their quality for me has never been too great. I've been on a couple Bollies that I have not liked at all. We've only been on this boat for one day, but I will say just cursory look so far, the quality is a lot better than the previous Bollies I've been on. Maybe it's because it's more of their larger kind of, uh, you know, higher end boat, but it's 48. So one of the cool things that Bali has is these big garage doors that slide up and down and it gives you all this internal space. So most cats have a, a doorway here and you have the internal space and you have the out, outside space. This is just, you can have it either way. So this door comes up and down, it's automatic and uh, pretty cool. Feeling outside, you can slide these open and just kind of give you more of that outside feel. And so they'll lock into place. Uh, I should, right? Maybe, maybe they won't. Okay, I'll keep it closed then because we're about to go sailing. The davits on this, I also like. It's push button. So I just push button, uh, uses a winch can bring the dinghy in and out and it works really well. 
Uh, I hate it on the, the smaller boats. Sometimes they just put like a hand winch for this. Just get an electric winch. So you're gonna put this thing up and down every day and you're gonna sit there and grind all the time. Get an electric winch for it. And uh, yeah, but I like it how it brings up the dinghy. It's nice and secure. It's not gonna swing with this with like this. And uh, yeah, I like the way this is set up. And pretty much everything on this boat, maybe that's one of the reasons I like it is um, they fitted it out right. Everything's electric and everything's kind of automatic and done well instead of cheap. All right, so walking forward, another thing I love about the Bollies is they have a full-size household refrigerator. It just, it's so nice having that much refrigeration space and a freezer on this side. I mean, like, you know, compared to a lot of the drawer type fridges that a, some boats have, I mean, just so much space, so much easier. It's just, I love it. And so like my boat, so by the way, my boat, if you're interested, it's an Island Spirit 525. So it's about four feet bigger than this. Should be ready in the spring. I'll pop up some pictures over it, over this. But uh, yeah, so the Bali 48 is great, but get the Bo uh, Island Spirit 52, it's better. But coming here into the galley, nice open area. I mean, this whole thing is just open. Uh, over here, two deep sinks, your trash underneath, lots of storage in all these cabinets everywhere. Your stove and cooktop on a cat, you don't need a gimbal. And then just more storage everywhere. And one of the shortcomings I've always felt that Bali's had is their electrical system. I feel like the electrical system on this one is better. They put a better inverter on it. Everything's automatic switching. It'll automatically switch from shore power to your generator. So everything's just push button over here. You have your uh, control panel over here for uh, your tank and measurements and water and all that. You have a, a chart plotter in here that's a repeater from up, upstairs. You can even control the autopilot and everything from in here. So just the quality on this one's a lot better than some of the smaller bollies I've been on. But I really like this setup here. The electrical system seems a lot better than other bollies. Another innovative thing that I think Leopard has it for sure, but the things I really like about the Bollies is having this door that goes through up to the bow area um, because, I mean, it's so nice just having this extra walkway just having to get outside the boat. It's safer too if you're underway. You can just open the door and get in. You're not going to have to walk along the outside. It's And you just get that much more airflow coming through the boat, which is nice. So stepping forward, and another thing they've done is just have this seating area. This massive seating area here. I've, they're missing a few cushions have been lost recently, but you have cushion seating all the way around and a table and it's just a great spot for hanging out, especially down here in the Caribbean where it can be hot. If you're hanging out in the back of the boat, you're not getting much wind through there. Up here, you can be up here and in the wind when you're at anchor and staying nice and cool and it's pretty cool. One way they've done this is they've gotten rid of the trampoline. So boats are all about weight, right? And so Essentially, the reason why your standard catamaran has a trampoline up here is to save weight, right? You have this much fiberglass and this much space up here, you're using it, uh, it just adds weight to the boat. And also, you can let waves you know, spray through instead of slapping on the boat. Uh, Bali has decided to do away with that. I think their rationale is, is that when, they, when catamarans were first designed, you know, uh, fiberglass was much more, much heavier, right? Because they needed more of it to do it. So now they're using lighter fiberglass with the same structural stability. So they're saying that they don't need it anymore. And as far as wave slap, like waves coming up through here, I've sailed a few bollies. I haven't had any real bad experiences with it. Um, so I'll, I don't know. Uh, I, again, I've not gone in open ocean on this. We've just been kind of charter boats, right? So, but for what it is, if you're just cruising around the Caribbean or wanting to charter a boat, a Bali, I mean, just design wise, I really like it because of the creature comforts like this. All right, and on each side, you do have these four peaks, uh, little cabins. Uh, you, it's got like, is there a head or anything in there? I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's just a little cabin, like a crew cabin. If you're chartering, don't, don't plan on putting anybody in one of these. We use it for, we plug in our Starlink here and we got, uh, uh, luggage storage, but yeah, I mean each side has a, I think this one might even be a head on that side. All right, coming back, another nice feature that I like on the uh, Bali 48s is they have a full flybridge, so we'll go up there now to the flybridge. All right, this is the full flybridge. You have your helm station here off to the side a little bit, but you're still engaged with everybody up here, so it's lowered a little bit and away from that, so you just have room to work and do all your stuff, and you can sit two people here. But then having this seating area up here on a nice calm night, I mean, this would be the place we're planning to hang out quite a bit. I'm looking forward to it. So everything runs back to the cockpit. All your lines run back here, right at the mast, actually. So, uh, you know, it's self-tacking rig, all your lines. Uh, and it's uh, one thing I do like, it's not single line reefing. It's uh, you got a four and a half line for each reef. So you have two reefing lines for each reef, which I, I prefer because the, it tends to bind up less. When you have single line reefing, it's going through like eight blocks and it'll bind up and it's hard to move the lines. I like having two lines for it. But just, 
the hangout area here is pretty nice. You have your two winches on each side. Uh, your uh, starboard winch is powered, so electric. Uh, that'd be for pulling up the halyard and everything. Your Genoa sheet is running, runs to the port side uh, winch, which is not powered, so you'll have to use a, a handle on that. But really, it's a self-tacking jib anyway, so uh, you know you don't really, you know, I mean, you're not going to be calling in and out on the sheets quite often. All right, this is the helm station. You have your throttles up here on each side. I like the placement of those; pretty easy to use. What I don't necessarily like, but I get it, I kind of don't have an option, is that all your other stuff is behind the wheel, which actually is not that, I just realized because, uh, so a lot of times, especially if it's got manual linkage, okay, if I want to mess with the tarp water, which is not here, it's it's nice big tarp water, it's Raymarine, I don't really like Raymarine, but I prefer B&G, but whatever. Uh, if you're trying to use this and steer at the same time, you know, you get your hand stuck through there. Where, but the thing is, is this is hydraulic steering. So when you have the autopilot engaged, which is basically 99% of the time you're gonna have the autopilot engaged, the wheel does not turn because it's hydraulic steering. So you can be, you can adjust your heading and do all that stuff on the autopilot or change whatever you need through here. And it's not gonna be spinning the wheel, which is kind of nice. Uh, so then your chart plotter there, you have your uh, uh, autopilot controls here and chain counter, you have your Fusion uh, stereo remote, so you got the one downstairs, and then your engine controls right here. Overall, I like it, not bad. I wish, you know, it was a little bit different where you didn't have to go through the wheel, but because it's hydraulic steering, not bad. Uh, one, one thing you'll see on the screens uh, that they look kind of browned out or whatever, but that's just the filter I have on the lens. Uh, it's kind of an ND filter, and, and so it, it doesn't look like that in real life. It's just the camera picking it up. Uh, you can access the flybridge from either side, either here or the other way, so that's kind of nice to get up here. But we are going to go down now, and I'm going to show you the uh, cabins. Yes. All right, we'll start on the port side here. Uh, it's a five-cabin layout. Uh, one of the cabins is a bunk room, but it, it does have its own head. Uh, this is one of the VIP cabins. It's only accessible uh, from the outside. You can't access from the inside, but you just lift this up. We'll go on down in. All right, so this is one of the VIP cabins. It's a little smaller because this is the three cabin side, but a queen size bed here uh, with a little bit of a cutout so you can walk around. And then, uh, you know, you've got a hanging locker on this side, a little bit of another hanging locker on the other side over here. And it has its own head and uh, wet shower, everything combo in one. Has its own like uh, air conditioning controls. So that door does close down outside and it has a shade that will come down to give you a little privacy so nobody from the outside can look down in your cabin as they're walking by. And you have your little port lights over here for seeing the water. But just for a nice little VIP cabin, uh, I mean, I probably wouldn't want to live in this one full time, but for, uh, you know, chartering, great. Okay. All right, continuing forward on the port side, uh, you do access these other two cabins from the inside. You just step right down here. A little bit aft is the bunk room. Uh, two, I mean, good sized bunks. They're not tiny bunks. And then it, do, it does have some hanging locker space and it has its own private head here. You know, if you got some kids or, you know, a couple singles or something on the thing, it wouldn't be a bad spot to put them in here. So coming forward, you do kind of have the other VIP cabin here. It does have the raised queen size bed here uh, with little cut ends on either side so that you can walk up on the side and then just get in bed right here. Uh, so this one is a little bit different than the other side VIP in that it has just one single head. So it has a combination shower and toilet all in one over here. And then behind the entry door is your hanging lockers and storage. And then there's more storage underneath the bed. All right, uh, the starboard side is the two cabin side. So each of these cabins are a little bit bigger and a little bit better bathroom design. Uh, so we'll come down here and we'll go forward first. All right, so the bed is just like the other side, uh, kind of queen size with the cutout so you can walk around over there. But the difference being is that the heads are split here. So on this side, you have the toilet and sink. And on the other side, you have the shower. So that way, I, I do like having a separate shower than the rest of the toilet um, because it just, it's a dry head, right? So over here, if it's all combined, every time you take a shower, everything in there gets wet. Whereas over here, it's dry and you have your shower on the other side. All right, coming forward, you have the master cabin. Um, it is the largest of the cabins. Queen size bed, it does have the cutouts for walking around a little bit, but they're not as severe as some of the other ones. And just a lot of space here. Um, you have a hanging locker here. Uh, there's one on that side that's quite, quite large. And then the heads on this are the largest on the boat. So on uh, forward side you have your uh, toilet and sink and everything and then on this side 
is a pretty large shower with a seat and lots of storage and a lap. You have a nice little view looking out the windows here. Of course, you can raise and lower the shades. And then you do actually, you can access this cabin uh, from the outside as well. So it just makes it easier getting in and out of the uh, master cabin here. But yeah, uh, pretty spacious and it's nice to have a cabin this size. Well, there you have it. That's the tour of the boat. Thanks for helping me out. Yeah, of course. All right, uh, I guess, should we get off the dock? Let's do it, let's go have fun. What do you think? Let's do it. In the next video, I'm getting off the dock with these two lovely ladies and we are sailing through the Abacos. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you can catch the next video.